Let us know about Veda. While talking about Vedanta, I briefly told what Veda was. Veda, as I said, it comes from the root Vid, which means to know. So, Veda means knowledge. So, then I was telling about what is Vedanta, the essence of Veda, or the ultimate message of Veda is what is Vedanta. The ultimate message or the final message of the Veda, that is the final word of the Veda is Vedanta. Uh, that we saw, very briefly I told. But now I want to give a, uh, an idea about the structure of these Vedas, the structure of these Vedas. So let us see, <coughs> as human beings, the moment we are born, we are born into a society, we are born in a particular country with some rules, regulations, some constitution of that country and so on. We are probably born into some sort of class division, it may be some caste or something like in India or maybe some other race, if you go to some other western countries, some, some race, you are born into a race. So wherever you are born, you are bound or you are governed by certain rules, regulations. There are certain regulations which are at the social level. Social level regulations means there is a law which is enforceable at a social level. And then there are at, a, at spiritual level, at a slightly higher level, there are certain things which tell about uh, what is the nature of God, who created this earth and what are we, what is our relationship with uh, that divine. So all these things, they are also there. But these are at a level which are slightly higher thing, at a level, slightly higher level. And at that level, there are also certain ethical guidelines. That is, you have to do this, you should not tell untruth, you should not um, say cause any harm to others and then you should uh, do some good things like giving some donation and then uh, all these things, you have to help people, you have to love people, all these things which are unenforceable. So unenforceable but then they are all contained in some sort of code, it's a sort of code of conduct. So likewise if you go back, right now of course the society is highly evolved. After so many centuries and centuries of experimentation, the society has evolved and every society has its own rules, guidelines for everything. Uh, but then, imagine a society some five to six thousand years ago, that is the antiquity of these Vedas. Imagine a society when there was no uh, kingdom as such, probably there were kings of course, Rajarshi and all those things, they were there. In fact, our Puranas, if you see Puranas, for thousands and thousands of years we had these Rajarshis. So, this, uh, when these things were not so well known, you just go back to Vedic period. So, when these things were not so well codified, man required some sort of guidance. So, this Veda was his first guidance for all things, for both spiritual things, that is the things which are talked at a higher level and then what are they at the social level. So, Veda is there telling something about uh, the social order. It's about certain code of conduct which has to be followed in a social in a society. And then it also tells something beyond this thing, when you talk about your self-realization, when you talk about um, say what is the nature of ultimate reality, <coughs> what is that ultimate reality? So these two levels, Veda talks. So if we see that division in this Veda, the classic division is Mantra Brahmana Yor Vedaha, that is what Sayanacharya says. That is mantra portion and brahmana portion. Mantra portion is where this rishis they visualized a particular force in nature. A particular force in nature means this agni or prithvi or something like vayu. So they have seen various forces in nature and then they have seen some sort of corresponding, the, the, some sort of correspondence, some sort of interrelationship between our own nature and the forces in nature. Our own nature, what is it? We have some five senses, I see something, uh, I feel something, I smell something, I taste something, so I have some senses. So then I think, that, is, that means there is something called mind, there is a thinking capacity. So this is the material which I have and outside I see the, the five elements which I see, prithivi, apaha, teja, earth, water, fire, air and space. So these are the things which are also corresponding with my senses. This prithivi corresponds with my sense of smell. This water corresponds with my sense of taste. Then fire corresponds with my sense of sight. Then air corresponds with my sense of feeling. Then um, uh, space corresponds with the sense of hearing. 
so all these things they correspond so there is a sort of interdependence between the microcosm and the macrocosm so because of this they evolved certain uh, some sort of uh, they visualized certain um, uh, say relationship they evolved certain mantras what are called praises some hymns in praise of those things and then that was the that is the portion called mantra portion then the man also a man should also be a, a man in society let us say a human being in society he should also be told about some sort of some code of conduct so that code of conduct was in the shape of some rituals so this ritual is something okay you have to do this particular yagna yagna is something again it is again we have to take a different i will tell in a different thing so yagna is a uh, say an expression of interdependence in society a human being he has to help others others have to help him so yagna in fact in gita bhashya in the fourth chapter of gita and third chapter of gita lord krishna gives a very very liberal and very elaborate uh, not liberal very very expanded meaning of that word veda uh, sorry yagna so this yagna is something which instills some social discipline so this yagna how it has to be performed so a ritual stage is there and after that and uh, that entire that thing is there in the portion of called brahmana this mantra portion is visualization of various uh, hymns and what not then brahmana portion it starts with this karma level and then it moves to slightly beyond that about what is the nature of god then there starts upasana it may be a fire god somebody doing agni upasana somebody doing upasana of surya upasana of the surya means sun the sun god worship then somebody does varuna upasana somebody does samadar upasana so these are the uh, say it is a sort of intermediary stage between this pure karma and pure gyan this upasana is a sort of intermediary stage where this man is graduating from the state of pure karma the pure action or pure ritual to a state of pure uh, say gyan the pure gyan i am going to i will go i am going to say this upasana again is something which is a uh, which we have to understand that again upasana maybe i will take in a, i will tell in a different session what is upasana what is saguna upasana and what not um what is nirguna upasana i'll tell in a different um, say snippet uh, and also about what is upanishad i'll tell in a different snippet but this karma upasana and then again graduating to gyana gyana is a pure self enquiry self enquiry is what you he you, you man wants to know what is the supreme man ultimately his desire is to know what is that supreme reality so religion can say okay for the purpose of a common man religion can say okay this is the nature of god so i visualize agni as supreme another man visualizes sun as sun, the sun god as the supreme another man visualizes another form say vishnu or shiva these are also vedic forms the shiva is there in veda vishnu is there in veda so there are some other some uh, deities who are mentioned in the veda so these vedic gods there again uh, it is not as though they are purely dependent on some belief system it is not as though suddenly somebody came and said no this is god this is the description of heaven this is what i am going to say it's not like that there are there are certain ideas around the uh, idea of god for example if you see uh, i will i can illustrate you must have uh, seen this lalita sahasranama lalita sahasranama they say mano rupekshu godanda pancha tanmatra sayaka lalita sahasranama if you see that photograph of lalita Uh, she is having a sugar cane she, she is having a sugar cane and then that sugar cane is there and then mana this mana this mind human mind is represented by the sugar cane because sugar cane is something which gives you the juice which gives you what you want so mano roopa ichu kodanda pancha tanmatra sayaka this five senses these five senses are the indriyas which go on to the sense objects and then they enjoy the sense objects the mind is something mind is sending these five sense objects to different things and then enjoys the thing so that is that is how that visualization is there so this idea of god becomes an idol idea of god becomes a picture so similarly lalita the same lalita is sitting on what sitting on shiva 
Shiva, they say Shiva, what is the Shiva? Shiva represents that supreme consciousness. So, this Shakti, Lalita is, represents Shakti. So, this Shakti is something which is a manifestation of that, uh, say, supreme consciousness. Supreme consciousness is something which has no relationship, which has no function. So, but there is an emergence of some Shakti. So, from Shakti only this creation of this universe or appearance of the universe takes place. So, this Shakti is something which is dependent on this consciousness. So, that is how that idea is shown by putting that, by keeping Shiva. Shiva, Shiva is shown as lying down and then on him this Shakti is sitting. So, this idea around God, idea of God becomes that symbol of God. So, it is not as though it is a pure meaningless uh, idol worship or anything like that. It is not like that. You go to Vishnu Purana, you find symbolism of Vishnu. You go to Shiva Purana, you find symbolism of Lord Shiva. You go to Ganesha Purana, you find symbolism of Lord Ganesha. So, it is like that. So, but unfortunately we have, we have to read. If we don't read, then we will give all types of meanings or we think that they are all meaningless. So, anyway. So, this, uh, this Upasana is at that stage, that second stage, where you are dwelling on the nature of that God. Whatever God form or whatever natural force which you, which you visualize as God. And beyond that is that pure speculation, where you have to uh, uh, say, uh, think about what exactly is the ultimate thing. The ultimate thing, you can't confine yourself to this only. What is the ultimate thing? From that Lalita picture, coming back to that Lalita picture, you have to go to that Shiva. What is that ultimate consciousness? So, that we have to see. For that, again, what is the thing which we have? What is the data we have? If we have to experiment, if we have to know, we, have, we should have some data if you have to conduct an experiment. The human body is the laboratory for a man. And similarly, the external universe is the laboratory. The human body consisting of this body-mind complex, as we say, Dehendriya Sanghata, body-mind complex is the laboratory which you have. And then the external world is a laboratory. So, that is why, that is what we see in one Upanishad. A son goes to a father. Son goes to a father and asks him, Oh father, tell me Brahma Vidya. Then son, the father tells, Brahma Vidya, it is not as though I can straight away tell you. You please go and think, what is the data you have? You have Annam, Pranam, Chatshush, Rotram, Mano, Vajamiti. He says, you are having a body, you are having this Pranam, this, this air which you breathe, this Prana Shakti. Then you are having these senses. All these things you have, you go and think and think and think. So, he comes and then he, he speculates like that. So, it is a sort of rational approach to realization of self. So, in Upanishad, that portion which deals with this thing is called Upanishad. And these Upanishads are contained at the end of this Veda, at the end of these Vedas. So, that is why it is called Vedanta. So, if we see the general structure, there is what is called a ritual portion and there is what is called a Jnana portion. <coughs> if you want to very clearly demarcate, you, the, you can demarcate like that. There is a Karma Kanda, that is the path of action, the path a man can leave, has to lead uh, while in this transactional world, at a worldly level, what is the reality? And at another level, what is it? That is called Jnana Kanda. So, this is what is the general structure of Veda. Thank you.